Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Tuesday, October 24th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. We talk a lot on this show about what AI can do. But how does it come up with its responses? In other words, how does it think? Well, that's something even experts are still working on. And it's one reason our tech columnist Christopher Mims says not all these systems are ready for prime time. Christopher is with us now to talk about this. So tell us more about how you reached that conclusion. So a lot of today's AI, um, it's incredibly primitive. The engines that made possible the generative AI, which makes possible these large language models like GPT-4 and BARD and all of those, you can write out the code to rough out the basics of that engine in a couple pages. And so mathematically, it's very simplistic. And it's sort of a miracle, even to those who've created it, that it works. And so where we are now is that scientists and engineers are in a position where they have to go back and explain why it works. It's kind of like how physicists looked at the steam engine and they were like, we're going to have to invent a whole new physics to understand how this works and how to improve it. What's the risk, though, of not knowing where it's going or how it works? One of the challenges with with current AI is that if we don't understand it, we don't have a very good idea about how to improve it. And that puts us in kind of a desperate situation in a couple of different ways. One is the power consumption and the money consumption of these AIs is pretty fantastical right now. So we really are in dire straits where we need to better understand these systems so that we can make them more efficient and more capable as well, and less likely to harm us through things like hallucination, which is where AIs just make stuff up. Talk to me a little bit about the reasoning and the thinking that AI can do. Uh, There seems to be some debate about whether or not AI is actually reasoning when it comes up with its conclusions. Yeah, there's this ferocious debate right now among experts where on one extreme you have people calling AI just stochastic parrots, which just means like just a random regurgitator of information. And then on the other extreme you have people who are like, we're pretty close to artificial general intelligence. The truth lies somewhere in the middle, probably closer to the stochastic parrot crowd. And a lot of what AI does now that seems kind of amazing and creative or logical is probably just a product of the fact that these big AIs, these generative AIs we're working with now, they just have so much knowledge stuffed into them that whenever you're asking them a, a question that might seem like a, a synthesis question or a reasoning question or you're asking it to like pass the bar or whatever, it, it's just regurgitating stuff that it already knows. People call it spicy autocomplete. I just think of it as a better search engine. I like spicy autocomplete. Yeah, but but some have pointed out that these generative AIs can do things that really are not in their training data. So they might be able to, with some coaxing, multiply two four-digit numbers together, you know, and demonstrably this isn't in their training data. Others have shown that if you train them in the right way, they'll develop basic models of, let's say, a game that they've learned to play. So it seems like these fairly primitive models do have some ability to carry out logical operations, to reason, in a sense, at a very, very primitive level. If we don't know what could come of this, if we don't know what developments are possibly next, how are the people who make these tools thinking about improving them, thinking about moving forward at all? A lot of what folks are trying to do now is in a sense, make AIs that are narrower, that are more purpose-built. So let's say you need an AI that can help you make the battery in your electric vehicle have more range. And that AI is sort of married to a physics-based database of what we know about how batteries actually work. And so these purpose-built AIs, that's kind of where the future utility is going to be wrung out of these systems. Christopher, how are the people who are building these large language models thinking about AI's reasoning capabilities and its future? One researcher at Google, I spoke to at Google Research actually, said, look, here's some incontrovertible evidence that these AIs are capable of primitive reasoning, you know, however elementary it might be. Researchers I've talked to elsewhere are like, "Mm, I don't think there's any reasoning going on. I think they just have 
tons of data that they've memorized that we don't even know about. So it's unclear. The big companies that have built the really large models are focused on not losing money and are focused on reaching profitability. It's not clear that they can do that, frankly, with their current models. It sounds like one of the things that you're saying is that maybe we don't need AI that's so much smarter than us. We need AI that can do one thing and do it well at a maybe a human level, and we'll just need multiple versions of this. The way I would put it is maybe we don't need AIs that are so generally capable. Why are we asking you know, an AI that could pass the bar exam to help draft social media posts for us. We're just, we're hitting every nail with a giant crane. We're just trying to demolish the problem through brute force. But uh, hopefully the future AIs that are more specialized are just a lot more efficient. That was our tech columnist, Christopher Mims. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Briefing. Today's show was produced by me, your host, Zoe Thomas, with supervising producer, Melanie Roy. We'll be back tomorrow. Until then, you can find more tech stories from the Wall Street Journal at WSJ.com.